Hi, my name is Karin Tripp and I am the author of Math, Art and Drawing Games for Kids. And today I'm in the Quarto classroom to teach you about math. I'm so excited about our project today. We are gonna do something called rotational symmetry. But first, let me just show you a little bit about this book that I have had so much fun making and creating and a little, a little bit behind it and why I made this book. Um, if you are somebody who doesn't love math very much, then you're gonna love this. Now, you may think I'm a little crazy to say that because it's a math book, right? But when you put math and art together, it changes everything, I promise. So, I did not used to like math. When I was a kid, math was my least favorite subject. But as I, I, was, I was growing up and raising my own children now, I started to see the beauty of math in the many ways that it can just be so much fun. And I started making things to help my kids really learn to enjoy and have fun with math. And that's where this came about. And I have created some really fun projects that I think that you will definitely love. Now, let me show you in the book here what we're gonna be creating today. It is called Rotational Symmetry. And it might be a little tricky for you to see, but I'll show you some real life things. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a project that spins and makes just beautiful artwork while learning about something called symmetry. Now, if you've never heard of symmetry before, symmetry is when the parts of a shape um, are identical if they're flipped and they would be the same on both sides or the same upside down and rotational symmetry is when it's the same no matter which way it is rotated. And there are some really cool examples of that just in nature itself. And I'm gonna show you some of those. Now here I have four pictures from nature of rotational symmetry. We have this gorgeous flower, a starfish, one of my favorites, a pine cone, and a snowflake. Now all four of these things, now if you watch, if I turn this paper this way, this way or this way they don't look upside down no matter which way i turn them do they so that is an example of rotational symmetry and we're going to make some beautiful projects and i'm pretty sure you'll probably have all that you need to make this at your house um, if not they're really easy to get so let me show you my favorite example that i made i made a whole bunch to practice so i could show you and this right here i think is so pretty have you ever played with the toy called a spirograph? You maybe have one, or maybe your friends have one, and it's a little um, plastic shape with gears around the edge, and you put it in the center of a circle and with a pencil in the middle, and you, you trace and you spin, and the gear goes around and around and around, and it makes shapes that look like this. And did you know that you can make something like that without that toy, but just with some cardboard? and some metal brads and a pencil and a piece of paper. Did you know that you could do that? I'm gonna show you exactly how, and I think you're gonna really love it. So those are the supplies you need. You need some cardboard, and you're gonna cut the cardboard into some small shapes, so you'll need a pair of scissors. Um, you need something to trace or draw with, a pen or pencil or markers, whatever you like to draw with. You need these little metal brads, and if you're not sure what those are, I'm sure your mom will know or your teacher will know, whoever you're doing this with. And let me show you, I'll open the box up and show you exactly what it looks like. They kind of remind me of little push pins, except it's really tiny, except on the back side, it opens up into two little flaps. And those little flaps are what help to make it spin around to make this rotation that we're gonna create. So start with a piece of cardboard here. I've got just a little flap from a box, um, cardboard box that I got a package in the mail and take a little flap of that and you can draw whatever shape you would like to draw. It does not have to be a complicated shape. In fact, easier shapes like this little raindrop or this little triangle um, are easier to cut out and they're also easier to trace because you're going to trace this shape a whole lot of times. So if it's a shape that is a little simpler, you'll be grateful. But here are some other ones. This one's a little more complicated, but still a whole lot of fun. He's a little squiggly. And my nine-year-old son made this one for me. This one is fun. This is a hockey stick kind of shape or the letter L. And some little mountainy zigzags are fun to do as well. And I can show you what some of these ones look like. This one 
if you can see that picture was made with the triangle. This picture was made with this hockey stick shape. This one was made with my little mountains. Oh, I have a couple of other shapes that I didn't show you. This one, I don't know what that would be called, but here's, here's what we made out of that. And this is how it's gonna be put together in just a minute. And I also have this shape here that we can try this time. Or maybe I'll try the squiggly, I don't know. We'll try them both, how about that? Um, so all of them can create really pretty pieces of artwork and you're gonna have a lot of fun making it too. So let's get started. What you need to do first, as I mentioned, is cut out your cardboard shape. And I just like to draw it on the cardboard with a pencil or a pen, something that you'll be able to see well. And then you cut that shape right out. And once you have it cut out, you're gonna take one of your little metal brads and you will push it right through the cardboard. And just wherever you want the top of your shape to be, it doesn't really matter, but you can see on this triangle, I put it right there. Now this is a little bit tricky because sometimes these metal brads will bend as you're trying to push them through the cardboard. So sometimes I'll take a pen or a really skinny piece of, um, a little skinny pair of scissors or something and just poke a little hole through that cardboard first to help the brad to be pushed through. And once you've got a hole in there, it'll push through a lot more easily. So I think I will try this shape this time. Clear a little more space here to work with. And once you have your metal brad through your cardboard, oh, one tip about when you cut your shape. Sorry, I didn't mention this earlier, but it needs to be small enough that it won't go over the edge as you rotate it. So if you can look at this one that I've done, as you rotate that shape around, it's never gonna cross over the edge. See, this side is a little shorter than this side but you want it to never overlap because if that happens, you won't get the full design on your paper. So make sure it's not much longer than the width from the center to the edge of your paper right here. And if you have a bigger piece of paper, then your shape can be bigger. But just for a regular size piece of paper, just a few inches long is as big as it needs to be. So take your shape and you're gonna just poke a hole right in the center of this piece of paper here. And that part's really easy to push through because the paper is a lot thinner than the cardboard. So once you've got it in, on the back side, you're gonna open up those little prongs that are on our brad and fold them flat. Show that to you real close what that looks like. And once that's on, you're ready to create your artwork. And I'm gonna do it with some markers because I like doing it with markers. They're brighter and they show up better. I'm gonna do these colors here. It's a pretty combination, but you pick what colors you like and make your design your favorite way. So I'll start with this, what is this color? This is raspberry. I'm gonna start with raspberry. And I'm just gonna all the way go around the shape, trace around the whole shape one time with that color. Make sure that it stays still as you trace so that you get it just right. So once you've traced it one time, just pop that cap back on and you're gonna spin it a little bit. As much or as little as you want. If you do it a small amount, you're gonna make a tighter design like I did here that looks more like the spirograph. If you do it a bigger amount, I'll show you an example that will look more like this one where you have bigger spaces between the lines. And both ways are really pretty. So it's whichever you choose. And maybe you can try it a few ways. So I'm gonna turn mine a little bit and then I wanna do another color. And I'll trace again with the next color. Sometimes you'll slip with your marker. I just slipped a little bit, but that's okay. It'll still look beautiful. Don't worry about mistakes. Next color. I'm gonna do is this lighter green. This actually doesn't look very different from my first green. And then I'll spin it again and go back. Actually, I'm gonna add in a fourth color. I'll add in some blue this time. 
little tracy trace. Give it another spin. Come back to color number one again. Did you know that math is used in so many different types of jobs that you might be able to have someday when you grow up? Some of my favorites is, as I show in a lot of the examples in this book, is that artists use a lot of math. So if you like art, you will actually need to know some math, believe it or not. They use it in so many ways. As you're seeing the symmetry, artists use symmetry so much in the work that they create and they use scale and proportion and all different kinds of things that are math terms and shapes. They need to know about shapes, which is a part of geometry, which is what we're doing right now with this sh symmetry and the shapes that we are drawing. Um, if you've ever heard of an architect, an architect is um, somebody who designs buildings. They definitely have to use a lot of math. And you wouldn't think that making a building would require math, but it sure does. And another one, which is probably one of my all time favorites is cooking. If you are a chef or a baker, you also have to use math. Can you believe that? If you've ever cooked with your parents, you may know that you have to measure things, right? And measuring is math. So there are so many ways in, in the world that we need to use math. And sometimes we think, why do we have to use or learn this boring thing? I don't need to know this, do I? But believe it or not, you're going to be really glad when you grow up that you've learned these things because you're going to use them often in your life. You use math when you have to hang up a picture. Did you know that? You have to measure and get it just right so that it, it looks nice on your wall and it's in the right spot and in the center. And you'll use math as you design what your house looks like. So an interior designer is somebody that would use math. There's so many different and amazing ways that we use it in this world. So know that it's important and know that it's very useful, but also it can be beautiful and fun in so many ways. And that's what I've learned as I've gotten older. Is that even though it was harder for me when I was a child, when I grew up and put it into practice and used it more, I realized that it's so useful and I can do so many amazing things knowing math. So we're almost coming around to the end of our circle here. And we're gonna end with the color we started with actually. It always seems to happen to me. We're ending on raspberry and we started on raspberry here. I think I'll give it one more twist so that they're not right next to each other. I'll give it another green. Actually, I'm gonna give it another blue because I think that'll look prettier. Because this is my design after all, right? And you can do your design the way you like it, whatever you think looks prettier. Okay, so here we are, all done. I'm gonna take out that piece of cardboard so you can see what the completed design looks like. Show you right there up close, isn't that beautiful? And look at how when I turn it, no matter which direction I go in, it doesn't look upside down and it all pretty much looks about the same, right? Isn't that amazing? Rotational symmetry is such a cool thing to learn about. And I think you're going to love trying this project. I want to show you just a couple of other things from this book that might get you excited for trying out some of these projects and might get you a little excited about math in general. Now I told you that artists use math a lot. So I wanna show you, here's, here's an example from a really famous artist. His name is Paul Klee, and he makes some really amazing art out of shapes and geometry. And you can create something like that as well. And you're learning about shapes and you're learning math and it's so much fun. I'll show you, oh, I found that pine cone one here is what I did with pine cones. And I showed you a minute ago that pine cones have rotational symmetry and I did a really fun project with a pine cone that's in this book. And here's another example of rotational symmetry with a stained glass art project that you make by cutting a snowflake. 
And there's so many cool things in here that you can learn about and have fun with. Um, I'll show you another one of my favorites. And this one is an edible math project. Now look here, we made edible shapes that you can eat. There are cookies, frosted cookies. Now how fun is that? I'm sure you would love that one. So this is such a fun book and I hope that you'll take some time to look at it and try out this project from it. And if you want some more examples of math art, you can come to my website, which is called Teach Beside Me. And I, I just wanna thank you for watching. You can purchase this book at wherever books are sold, whatever your favorite bookseller is. And if you do try this project or any of the projects from the book, be sure to tag me at Teach Beside Me and use the hashtag Quarto Classroom as well so that we can find you, myself and, and the Quarto Publishing Group, that, they, that we can find you and see your beautiful artwork as well. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you had fun with me in the Quarto Classroom today. Bye-bye.